Welcome, welcome. My name is Natalia. This is Crafting with Natalia, and today I have a video about cross stitch. Um, <laughs> I'm not quite sure how long this video is going to be, and I'm not sh quite sure exactly what I'm going to be talking about. Um, it could turn into a small floss tube, possibly. I don't know yet. Um, but I'm just going to give it a go. The original idea was to give you a quick recap of the retreat that I went to recently. Uh, so I recently went to Stitch in London, um, which is a fantastic retreat that's organized by uh, Marie from Stitches and Diamonds, I think. That's her channel name. Uh, I will link uh, Marie's channel um, in the description below. Sorry, my, my mind is not working. <laughs> I'm not really prepared for this video, by the way. But yes, so I will link Marie's channel in the description below. Uh, Marie is the loveliest, loveliest person ever. Um, she's fantastic um, and she's got lots of beautiful cross-stitch projects. If you're into cross-stitch, then you should definitely check her out. And also, if you'd like to attend Stitch in London in future, uh, she is the person to contact. And I'm sure she'll be announcing the dates for 2024 uh, very soon and how to sign up. Uh, so if you don't want to miss that out, definitely subscribe to her channel um uh, so the the stitch in london retreats are really fun they're very well organized and um because i live in london so it's very convenient for me i don't even have to book a hotel i can just travel from home um so it's yeah it's very nice and easy for me to get to um so yes, <laughs> so I wanted to just give you like a recap of what happened during Stitch in London uh, very briefly because it's quite hard to describe it and I didn't really take a lot of pictures or videos. I took some and I will insert them at the end of this video, um, whatever I find on my phone, but I didn't take a lot, um, mostly because um, if you've been on my channel for a while, you know that I've kind of... I've taken a little break recently and I had some family issues and uh, and some mental health issues and in general it's been a bit of a tough year for me and I am still struggling a little bit with socializing and with recording stuff and, and all that jazz. Uh, so really I did find it quite difficult, um, like it was quite overwhelming for me to attend the full retreat so I kind of I, I attended more part-time than I would normally attend um, and also you know it was quite a lot um, you know like it was lovely to see everybody it was lovely to catch up with everybody uh, but also it was quite a lot to process and I think I was just feeling kind of I don't know like it was a lot <laughs> so I didn't maybe do as much recording as I should have uh, but I'm sure if you check out Marie's channel um, and there's also Stitch in London Facebook group if you're interested in attending in future um, you can see some pictures there as well and other attendees have posted on Instagram as well uh, so you can check out the hashtag uh, Stitch in London 2023 um, and I just remembered something so let me just go and grab it and I'll be back so yes, yeah, so sorry if this video is a little bit disjointed, but I haven't really prepared for it. Um, I've been kind of meaning to record it, um, so it's been a couple of weeks since retreat has happened. Um, but I haven't really been in a mood for recording and then I was like, oh, what will I say? I don't have enough content. I don't really know. So it was all these kind of dots in my head and I was like, um, I'm just going to go for it today. I'm just going to see what I can do, see what I can show you and, um, hopefully enjoy this video. Uh, so... The main thing I wanted to show you that I am super, super happy with is at this year's, year's retreat, uh, there were three different workshops um, of which I attended uh, one of them. And so I attended the workshop by uh, Michelle from Mama Loves You GB. Um, she's got a wonderful YouTube channel and Instagram account, which I will both link below this video. Uh, but if you haven't, you should definitely check her out because she has uh, lots of useful advice and um, she's got lots of beautiful projects and beautiful finishes and advice on how to finish them. Uh, she also... Um, uh, collects some like beautiful samplers and then she tracks like the stories and, and there's lots of interesting stuff if you're into samplers as well uh, I think you will find her channel 
uh, quite um, useful and interesting and she's also recently started designing her own uh, so she's doing some reproductions but also she's she started designing some of her own stuff uh, so one series that she recently started designing is this series of little owls I mean little owls I don't I call them little owls I think they're called the parliament of owls um, which are like little ornaments um, that you can like um, well, they're kind of Halloween themed, I guess. Now it's past Halloween, but I love them. I think I would love them for any time of the year. And I guess you can just hang them around. Um, she had this lovely idea, and I will also insert that at the end. She brought this tree with her. Um, like, um, I don't know, was it plastic, metal? I'm not sure. But it was like a tree you can put in your room, um, on your, like hallway or something and um, you can hang the owls on that tree and they look pretty awesome honestly I'd love to have a tree like that one day uh, so anyway so um, basically Michelle offered one three chart um, for one of these owl ornaments uh, for the stitch in London attendees and um, she basically offered a workshop um, where you can learn um, so if you stitch it on perforated paper and uh, then the workshop was how to finish the owl on perforated paper into a hanging ornament and so I did that I was a bit rushed because um, the pattern was only really um, released to us um, like two weeks before the workshop which to be honest I think it is probably not enough time <laughs> For, so I was kind of like, okay, okay, I will try and stitch the owl, um, but I had other things as well. So it was a bit busy, but I did manage to finish the owl just before the retreat. Um, uh, so I kind of get a feeling like maybe these workshops were kind of the last last minute idea or something. Um, and hopefully the next year, the, the patterns for workshops will be released a little bit beforehand so that people have a bit more time to prepare. Uh, because I also had to actually buy perforated paper for it and some beads um, and then I was trying to find sequins but the ones that I bought I didn't really like very much uh, I just bought them off eBay and I ended up not adding sequins to mine uh, but in the original chart uh, well there's two options you can stitch the eyes um, with cross stitch or you can attach sequins um, for eyes which I think look really really cute and I might try and add sequins for uh, the other owls because I already bought a few of them um, so <laughs> I think she's released six uh, so far and um, you can see all of them on her channel and they're all available to buy on Etsy um, and I think I bought four potentially I think so and so anyway so the one that I stitched um, I think his name is Herbert <laughs> <laughs> Herbert the owl so they all have cute names and they all super cute I will actually insert a picture here of what Herbert should should look like originally and um, because my Herbert looks a little bit differently first of all I didn't realize um so okay so yes yeah, so I bought perforated paper um and I wanted to stitch it as closely to I liked Michelle's version basically I liked her finish so she did hers on uh, black perforated paper and so I thought, okay, I'm going to get myself some black perforated paper, uh, which I managed to get off eBay, I think, as well. Um, and so, yes. So, so what was I going to say? I forgot now. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, yes. So I think, because I've never stitched on a black perforated paper, I didn't realize that the coverage... Um, like, you can see, like, it's not great. So, so a lot of the colors are quite bright on the owl. And I only used two strands. Uh, so the perforated paper has 14 count and I've always um, stitched uh, on 14 count with two strands but I've never stitched on a black 14 count and I think that's why I didn't realize that actually you do need three strands um, so if I had if I was to go back and restitch it I would probably stitch it with three strands just to make her brighter because I think the coverage isn't as nice as I would like it to be Additionally, I accidentally mixed up my browns on the owl. Um, so I started, I already stitched most of my brown because I was rushing. I didn't have time to frog. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm not frogging. Also, I don't want to frog on perforated paper. I was worried it was going to rip or something. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to keep my brown as it is. But now my second brown 
well, it was kind of complicated. I, I I think because the branch as well had a different brown. I don't know. But anyway, I was trying to make the browns work. And I, I ended up changing almost all of the colors on the owl just to make, <laughs> make up for my mistake. So she is a little bit different to Michelle's owl. Also, my beads are very wonky. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> I tried to make them all go the same way and still they're all completely different <laughs> so it's really quite ridiculous but anyway uh you know what i love my herbert regardless of his wonky beady eyes and um sorry guys i had to make a little cut because i started coughing and <laughs> and losing myself um i had a cold for the past almost two weeks we're pretty much right after the retreat i got the cold and um yeah it's kind of it got better than it got worse and um, I kind of, this week was the worst, like the past kind of four days. So I'm still kind of recovering and I can feel, I can probably hear my voice is going. Um, so maybe this will be a short video after all. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so what I was saying is that I love my Herbert, regardless of all the things that are wrong with him. All the things, so regardless of the wrong colors, wrong coverage, um wonky beads i don't care because he's super cute anyway and michelle's worship was so helpful in finishing him i am much more confident now how to finish these perforated paper uh, ornaments um i mean i was kind of iffy about perforated paper anyway um uh, because i am too worried um i do get very sweaty hands when i get like well, sometimes sometimes even at home uh, like if it's summer for example but um even i don't know sometimes i may get sweaty sweaty palms but especially if i stitch like in front of people if i'm with other people i kind of get nervous and i get like sticky hands uh, so i was kind of worried but anyway um it's fine my perforated paper survived and i'm much more confident um to use it in the future and also to to know how to finish it um yeah, so so the technique she showed us was actually really easy. It didn't take long to finish it. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed the process and I'm really happy with the final result. So I'm going to show you now, after all this talking, I'm going to show you Herbert. So here he is. Oh my God, isn't he what? the cutest thing? <laughs> so I'm trying to keep him straight. So he's been hanging on my wall because I don't have a tree and I have a big empty wall. Uh, kind of between I've got like a shared living room kitchen area and I've got a wall that doesn't really have anything on it uh, so I thought it would be nice to put like collection of little ornaments there like if I when I stitch my owls and some other things but I really I just have Herbert for now so it's just been Herbert hanging on the wall for Halloween uh, but I think he's super cute so one close up so you can see him in all his beauty wonky beauty there we go yeah so i hope you like him like him guys um so yeah so michelle kindly provided uh, this little ribbon for finishing as well as double-sided tape and also the um, self-adhesive velvet um for the back um so it's a lovely um soft velvet uh, so yeah so there's also um double-sided adhesive there because um it's apparently quite hard to make the velvet stick by itself to the perforated paper with the stitching. Uh, so we still use like an extra layer of adhesive in between. Um, but it's so nice and velvety. I love how it feels. Um, yeah. So I think he's looking great. Uh, you can see the beads. So he's got some black beads, some white beads. And also, also this is a new discovery thanks to Michelle as well. She um she actually incorporated in the chart um DMC Etoile, uh, which is DMC that's quite that's like sparkly. And I never really tried DMC Etoile before, and I'm so happy because look at the sparkle on this. And you guys know how much I love sparkle, right? I absolutely adore sparkly threads. And this one is so much cheaper than Krennic because I normally always use Krennic. But actually, this one is really nice and easy to stitch with. It's cheaper. Uh, so I think I'm definitely going to be buying more of this one. Um, like, they've got lots of different colors as well. Uh, so I think this is going to be my new discovery. I'm really, really happy with that. Uh, so yeah, so Herbert. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, so what else did I want to tell you about the retreat? Look guys, it's already 15 minutes. Okay, so it's yeah, this video is already longer than I expect <laughs> Apparently I have lots to say even though I didn't think I had anything to say um so Well, I mean with retreats there's always it's always hard to even remember everything because um I came back home with so many things uh, because people you know like a lot of people bring small gifts uh, for like table gifts or even like some people like just just walk around the room and give stuff to to other people like like it's amazing how many gifts you get at the retreat one uh one that i'm very very happy is what i uh, received in my smalls exchange uh so i just wanted to show you that um so i was very very lucky i mean i wasn't actually there for so so basically i was late for the smalls exchange uh, but my friend tina picked up um a small for me um so so it was kind of like thank you tina for picking this one uh, but i was very very lucky um that the small that she picked was f um stitched by valerie and so valerie um she's a lovely lovely lady also from london i believe uh so we met last year on the stitch in london and she was there this year as well and i will also link her instagram account below um i can't now remember um what's her instagram name but i will also put it on the screen just so that you guys know but valerie uh, she had this very interesting idea, a very lovely fun idea to make her small um, coffee themed and she stitched, um, she basically for that reason she stitched something that I've never seen before and uh, she stitched a, like a mat like a, for, for a coffee or a coffee pot uh, that's actually waterproof uh, so apparently she covered it with like a sealant or um, something to protect the stitches from soaking, you know, for for, for absorbing any liquids. Um, obviously, I would never be brave enough to actually put my coffee on it. But I have a little coffee pot that I use every morning. Um, and basically right now it's just, it's just been standing on, you know, wherever. Um, but now I can, once it's dry and clean... <laughs> <laughs> I can put it on my new lovely mat that I got from Valerie. Um, I will insert a picture as well of me and Valerie because I, I asked her if, um, if I could have a picture with her and my small. And uh, she, she's just so wonderful. She's also a scientist as well. So yay, fellow scientist teacher. And she makes cakes. Um, so I think um, she, yeah, I think on her Instagram you can find them as well. She, she makes lots of beautiful cakes. Um, like professional kind of cakes. Uh, so she's a very talented lady, honestly. Um, but anyway, so um, the mat. So this is my coffee mat. <laughs> um... Yeah, so she she did like this lovely um, kind of joint. So this is like a piece of fabric with two lovely ladies. And then here she stitched this part. Um, I don't actually know where the chart is from. Um, she did write me a lovely letter, but um, now I don't know if I have it here. So I may not be able to tell you where this chart is from. I'm not sure if she told me. Hmm. I don't think no so so the letter is here it's also such a lovely funny letter <laughs> but uh, no I can't see in the letter um any description of where the chart is from um but I can ask Valerie or you can ask her if you really want to know um but I think it's really it's a really cool idea and and yeah now every time I put away my coffee pot I will be thinking of Valerie and Stitch in London so I think that worked out really great she also gave me lovely needle minder um, and also another thing another beautiful thing that she gave me is something that she made herself uh, so this is um, kind of how my small was packaged in this lovely lovely bag with um, with noms um, with coffee you know various variations of coffee in pots mugs and um yeah beans and all that so she made this bag herself so as i say she is a very talented lady and now i have a new project bag as well so how amazing guys <laughs> yes yeah, so i'm very very happy with my small and now i also made a small but um i don't know so i recorded before the stitch in london retreat i recorded a video 
uh, to show you guys my small, um, just kind of what, I'm, what I was going to give to someone. Uh, but to be honest, after seeing everybody's smalls, I think like mine was really bad. And now I don't know if I will post that video. <laughs> Because I'm actually like getting anxiety that um, people are going to judge me. Um, <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I don't know if I will find the courage to post that video. But anyway, so I did make a small um, that was like a wooden uh, kind of box. Um, yeah, but it's, it, it had a London theme, like a, a stitch in London. Well, like a London kind of um, stamp kind of uh, stitch stamp on, on it's kind of hard to explain i may insert a picture but i don't think i have a very good picture of it um but maybe i will find a bravery to post the video i don't know if i do post it can i just ask you guys to, to not to not be too harsh on me <laughs> and say not say horrible things because i'm already saying all these horrible things to myself so <laughs> please save me from that okay uh, so what else? What else? Well, another wonderful gift um, that I got on, on Stitch in London uh, was from a friend, uh, my friend Justine, um, who just, she's just so thoughtful and um, I'm so excited about this gift and uh, that's why this is one, like I got so many small gifts and I kind of put them all away already so I don't even remember everything that I got from everybody right now because it, it's, it'll be a very long video and I didn't want to just collect, pile all the stuff, um, you know, waiting until I record. So most of the stuff I just put away already. But this one is super special. So this one I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, so Justine, uh, she gave me a needle minder in the shape of a seahorse. And it's the most beautiful. So I've always wanted to have a seahorse needle minder, but I could never find one that I actually liked. Uh, so I kind of have been like putting it off. I'm like, okay, maybe one day one will, I don't know, I'll see one that I really like and then I'll buy one. And then Justine gave me this one and I just think she is just wonderful. This is this is like the best needle minder ever. So this is the seahorse needle minder that I got from Justine. Look at the sparkle on him and the colors. He is just so me, so me. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. So thank you Justine for, um yeah. For your kindness, for for you know keeping in in keeping me in your mind and uh, yeah just being so thoughtful and so wonderful. Thank you so very much. Um, yeah, and um, I bought a few Roxy flosses because um, we had Kerry from Roxy Flosco. Uh, so Kerry, she she's the one who does all the dyeing, and you can find her on. Um, on the channel, <laughs> on the channel where she records floss tube with Caroline and uh, I can't remember, is it notes from the workshop? I think it's called notes from the workshop. Again, I will link the channel below in the description because I can't remember anything today or ever really. Um, but yes, so, so Carrie brought some lovely floss with her because, so there was an option to pre-order floss um, before the retreat. But at the time when the pre-orders opened, I think they were open for a few days, um, quite a short period of time. That was when all the stuff was happening with my family and I saw the emails and I just, I couldn't deal with ordering floss at that time. It's just, it wasn't, it wasn't the time. So I didn't pre-order any. So, um, but fortunately there were some still that you could buy. Uh, so she had a bunch of different colors that she brought with herself. Um, so so the, here's some that I bought, like this lovely, I think this is my favorite. Um, so this is called Falu Red. Falu Red. Um, there's some lovely, actually if I put them all up together, you can see of, like the variety of colors that, uh, let me just, I'll just put them in this box and now I'm really confused. So I think, oh, there's one more. I think one I got for free. I think one was in the well actually so one was included in the in the I don't know I'm forgetting my words in the bag like <laughs> when we first came to the retreat um we all got like a like a bag with all the stuff <laughs> that you need for the retreat like the raffle tickets and um the charts so there were there were a couple of charts that were also provided for the retreat uh, one was designed by jacob from modern folk embroidery 
and one was designed by someone else's name now I can't remember um, but I will I should probably find these charts or I'm, I'll maybe try and insert the picture here or I will try and yeah I'll find them maybe and insert them somehow later um I but I can't be bothered looking for them now because I, I have no idea where they are um hi guys so just a quick insert here um because I forgot to find these charts before my video so I'm just going to insert them here uh, so these are the two charts that we got as part of the retreat uh, so this is the one from modern folk embroidery and it's called um 10 merry sailors and their loyal dog i guess that's the dog and it says stitch in london 2023 so it's like a ship and then the second chart is um the one over here uh so this one was designed by chloe wood from girl with the gavel stitches and i actually really like this one and it's nice and cute it's quite a small chart so um you know it's a quick stitch um so it's called twin bird pin cushion uh, so you can see it can be finished into a pin cushion like this um and i guess this is the original one and this is the reproduction yeah so they're both lovely charts um that you know uh, also very kindly were provided provided in the retreat package she just, just wanted to show them to you um because yeah i forgot to get them out before my main video and <laughs> then i was like kind of embarrassed about it because <laughs> they're lovely charts um i'm not sure if the ship is something i would personally stitch um i do love jacob's charts but maybe this one is not my favorite uh so i may give this one away at some point uh but the birds i think i would stitch at some point i think they're very lovely okay guys back to the main video but one of them came with this lovely floss, the, I think this is this one, Ooh. Um, which is Royale, so that's a beautiful one. And then I bought a bunch of other ones, so kind of this is like the different colors that I bought. They, they're not any, for any specific project really, I just like these colors. And, uh, you know, these were the ones also that, so she didn't have all of her colors with her. So she had a bunch of different ones and I just picked my favorites from them. Uh, so that's the ones I got. Um, but yeah, they're not for any specific project or anything like that. So it's just more like um, maybe one day I can use them for something when I think of something. Or I'd be like, oh, I need this color floss and maybe then I'll find this one. Like, oh, this is a perfect floss for this project, you know, that kind of thing. So I have this like little box. Um where I just keep various like flosses that are not DMC flosses just in case if I ever like have inspiration to stitch with them and then another exciting thing uh, was actually um, the raffle <laughs> so I won something in the raffle which I'm very excited about um, so you could put your name in like there was like five different jars I think and basically um, for each jar, there was like a bunch of stuff, so you could buy, um, buy a win. You could win a few charts, or some of them had like project bag. Um, I don't know if there was something else, but anyway, they they all like they had a few things each, and so I wasn't like there was a lot of charts maybe in there that I wouldn't stitch, but there was one that I I really love, um, and I really love to stitch. It was a new, it's quite a new release from um, Kathy Barrick, and. I was very very lucky to win this one um so the release uh, <laughs> i honestly this yeah i can't do long videos this is why i can't do long videos i'm i'm completely losing my mind but the chart the chart is stars in my garden from kathy barrick so i'm very very excited about this one yeah i really want to stitch it straight away it's also quite christmasy i think with the star flower kind of thing and the colors uh, so I think maybe maybe I will try and stitch it um, at least started before Christmas. But I'm doing a lot of Christmas stitching right now, so I'm not sure if I'm going to have time. Ooh, I found one more fluffs on the floor. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm doing some Christmas stitching at the moment, um, which I I will probably, I will try and finish some of it because I'm trying to finish some of it for Christmas because I want to give some gifts to my family. Um so one of the things I really want to finish is the Snow Angel by Joan Elliott. Uh, so that's something I started last year and it's, um, this is what she looks like. 
So this is something that I'm working on currently. Um, and I can show you, this is why this is kind of like a floss tube video, a very chaotic floss tube. But I thought, oh, maybe I'll show you something I'm working on at the moment as well as tell you a little bit about the retreat. Um, so this is my Christmas stitching um, from Joan Elliott. She's called the Snow Angel. Um, and I'm just using the cold four threads for her, I think. Yeah, so the only thing that I changed is I'm using a different cranic. Um it's a slight it's a slightly so I think the original has a gold cranic and I'm using more like silvery it's silver slash gold. It's a kind of yeah, it's in between almost. Um and then another thing that I'm doing slightly different is I am I have added some whisper whisper? Whisper I know, whisper thread for her, uh, like the fluffy bits. I'm going to do it on here as well. This is going to have whisper thread in it as well. And also at the bottom, she's got like a whole kind of, um, <laughs> what do you call it? I don't know. At the bottom of her dress, uh, she has this thing, um, which I would also like to use whisper thread for um i don't particularly enjoy stitching with whisper thread um but i do like the fluffiness i think it actually makes a lot of difference here and uh, like it's quite three-dimensional i'm not sure if you can see it um but it it does add like another dimension to the project um yeah so this is where she's at so this is something that I've been working on over the past um, few days, just to let you know. And another thing I started is a Mill Hill kit um, with a Santa. Um, is this one from Jim Shore. And um, I like, I've got all, there's like a series of four of them. Um, Santa, Christmas tree, reindeer and a snowman. And I love them all. I think they're all really cute and I think they will look really good when they're stitched up. They obviously have lots of beads as well. And so this is kind of... Ooh, let me see my board. Yeah. So it's not... <laughs> so you don't see the background behind him. Um, yes, yeah, so this is my uh, Santa. This is where he's at. I really like the colours of him. He's very bright and colourful. And I think the beads will look, look lovely on him. So he's stitched on Ada, which was provided with the kit. I think it's 16 count. It looks like 16, yeah. Uh, and the, the angel, snow angel, she is stitched on this lovely, beautiful, sparkly fabric, um, which I believe is from Megan, uh, Coffee Crafts Megan. I love this fabric. I want more of it. <laughs> so I may need to speak to Megan. Like, can you make me some more? <laughs> because I have some other angels and... Um, Christmas things um like John Elliot has a lot of nice things like wintry things um so for future years I may I may need some more of this and it's very sparkly I think it's 28 count it feels like 28 count um it's just an even weave um but it's beautiful opalescent kind of light blue um very wintry blue lovely color uh so that's the one yeah that's why I'm stitching her on um, so that's some of my Christmas stitching. I, I'm also trying to do some smaller Christmas things as well. Um, at the retreat, I stitched on um, a couple of different things. Um, also, I wanted to show you because I got some lovely uh, project bags in the mail from my friends and I wanted to show you this. Um, so uh, one thing that I stitched on um, is a very, it's really, uh, there's not a lot to show because I haven't really stitched much on this project. Uh, but one thing that I stitched on was the, is it called the Aquarium from Luca, Lucas, Lucas, I don't know. Um, but Lucas re recently, maybe like three months ago or so, released a new kit. Um, they keep releasing really good kits, by the way. They just released this peacock kit and I love that peacock kit. It's, it's just gorgeous. Uh, so, yes. <laughs> So uh, I know I got distracted with the peacock because I really want that peacock king. But I don't even have time to stitch this kid. So yes, yeah, so me and Lizzie, yes, and exactly. So Lizzie is the one who sent me this beautiful project back, which I'm going to show you now. But so Lizzie Fisher um, from 
She also has a channel. Mrs. Miss Mrs. Fisher Stitches. I don't know. Um, I will link her below. Hi, Lizzie. <laughs> Um, but she gave me this lovely project bag and she also loved this kit and I love this kit and we like okay should we stitch it together should we do a stitch along um, maybe more like start along really because we started in, on the same day and then I, I haven't stitched on it really until the retreat um, but um, it's a lovely kit it's called the aquarium so I'm going to show you so wait so this is the bag mm, it's got seahorses on it look 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 ah <laughs> yes, yeah, so my seahorse bag, but inside it, it has fishes, fish, fish, fish is plural of fish, isn't it? There's no fishes, Um, but <laughs> she sent me, she made it, she made it herself. I've got really talented friends, honestly, <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Um, So yes, yeah, so this one's got fishes inside, fish. <laughs> is too hard English is too hard uh, so fish <laughs> inside and this is the oh so there's got many pockets and I don't know what's in which pockets this is this is so good like there's multiple pockets in here for stuff um but this is what the finished design should look like so it's a full coverage really with some backstitch in it as well um so yeah, but I'm finding it challenging because it's a full coverage Um, there's quite a lot of color changes and it's on a paper chart so and multiple pages like it's a lot of pages Um, yeah, so like the we started with the middle fish like I started in the middle but then this fish goes across like multiple different pages and you have to patch them up and like join them okay where is this bit and and then because there's so many fishes how do i know which fish is on which page and i'm like i can't orient myself on this chart so really this chart has been a struggle for me a big struggle but anyway so this is what it's supposed to look like um it comes with lovely lovely colors so this is floss from lucas so they've got their own floss and these are the beautiful colors that you find in this kit. Just look at those colors. And yes, I've already made a mess of them. I'm sorry, but this is this is me. I am messy in that way. <laughs> I struggle with organizing stuff and keeping them tidy. Yes, yeah, so lovely colors. Love them. Um, but what? Yeah, I can just show you what I've stitched so far. Since I'm showing you stuff. But I'm now I'm looking for my board. Whatever happened to my board? I can't see it. I think I've lost it. Found it. Found my board. Okay. And that's my fish. <laughs> well, part of my fish. <laughs> so they give you gridded, <laughs> gridded Ada. Yes, it's Ada. Uh, but the thing is, I didn't really think about the grids. <laughs> I started it, right? And I stitched a bit of that fish. And I'm like, oh, I should have probably started so that the grids match the chart um but it was too late i'm like i'm not frogging it just because my grids don't match the chart so i'm so i'm not really following the gridding myself so it's my so gridding is pretty useless <laughs> in my case <laughs> but it's okay it's okay i've managed to stitch this much um so that's fun lovely colors on this fish and I'm quite excited to see the rest of it. I just haven't really had time because I've been stitching lots of gifts this year, I think. So with gifts, there's a pressure of um, you have to actually finish them on time. Uh, I've just finished a lovely crochet gift for my friend uh, who's going to have a baby. So it's ready for her baby. Um, and I recorded a video with it, um, just a short one. So I'm going to post that video soon so you can have a look. But so there was, so I was doing quite a lot of crochet lately. And then before that, I was doing some cross stitch gifts. And um, yeah, I just think this year has been a lot of gift stitching. So I've decided next year I'm not doing gifts. <laughs> I'm going to be mean. <laughs> I'm not going to stitch anything for people. <laughs> I'm just going to stitch stuff for myself because I'm feeling like there are so many projects I want to stitch, right? And I just never have time um, because, because I keep stitching things for other people, right? But what about all my lovely projects? Like another lovely project that um, I stitched on in Stitch in London um, was my Bella Filipina, which I really want to stitch more on because she is so gorgeous. Guys, look at her. 
by the way, I've looked. Uh, I've lost the cover picture. Um, I had it before the retreat, um, and I thought I packed it together with her, but um, it seemed to have disappeared since the retreat. So really, I have no idea um, where it went. It's probably in one of my project bags. But it's because I was like repacking five times before the retreat, like which bags I'm taking with which project. So I haven't found. So I can't show you the cover photo, but I can try and insert one if I find one. If not, you can Google it. It's Bella fin Filipina Hummingbird Pixie. Um, but this is her. Look at her, guys. So again, let me just grab the board. Ah, ah. I still want to finish her. Um, also, she has a lot of beads. Like, like a lot of beads. And I really want... And it treasures as well. I really want to get to the beads. Because they're like different sizes, different colors. And I just really want to do the beads already so i think after the new year she will be my priority i think but then i say that about many of my projects um but i just love her so much look at her guys so i only did a little bit of stitching i just did the pink part here and the retreat so not a lot really um but that's where i am with her i just really wanted to show her to you because i love her so much <laughs> and then the final thing that i think I stitched at the retreat was um I don't think I've ever shown you this one but now I've taken it off the nerd frame so it doesn't look as nice because I think well it's a bit crinkly I didn't iron it as well but I just wanted to show you oh and here's the gift as well I got um I got this lovely needle minder um from Julie 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 gave me this beautiful needle minder that uh, Megan was selling at the retreat. Come on, focus. There we go. It's like a bee. Yeah, like a kind of bee fly insect. It's beautiful. Beautiful. And it works really well with this project. So I kind of left it on this project. <laughs> so I am stitching. Uh, and I'm very close to finishing it and I would finish it um, very soon but I don't have time because I have to do all my Christmas stitching now okay so I'm not finishing it now we're gonna have to wait for the finish uh, but it's almost finished really uh, it's the honey makers from blackberry rabbit you can get this chart as pdf um, from fox and rabbit web website I got this paper chart from Either patchwork rabbit or it wasn't one to three stitch. I think it was in the UK I bought it, so may, potentially eBay. I may have bought it on eBay, but I think patchwork rabbit used to have it, and I think also peak site um, needle crafts may have had it as well. Uh, so you can check with them. But this is such a beautiful chart to stitch. Oh, guys, it's amazing. Uh, I've done some modifications, um, I love it. Love it, love it, love it, and I can't wait to finish it. It doesn't look as impressive when it's not like stretched on the frame, so it's just kind of just to give you an idea. Um, but this is and also sorry, I've got like a hanging thread, and this is why I stopped at the retreat, and obviously I never <laughs> Yeah, so this this is it, and sorry about the crinkles. Um once I finish it, I will frame it, and when I frame it, it will look gorgeous, and then you will see it all how gorgeous it is. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. So it is, it's these lovely four bees, or really they look almost more like bumblebees to me rather than bees. Um, I've done, so most of the threads that I use are, some of the threads that I've used are called for, maybe I should say. No, I think most of them are called for. I think I've changed maybe the greens. Potentially the greens are different. The, the pinks and reds, they're the same as charted. The yellow is the same as charted. I think this yellow cranic in the middle was charted. Not sure if it's necessary to be on. As much as I love cranic, I'm not really sure if it, if you're just buying cranic for, for this small bit here and here. and, and this, I'm, I wouldn't probably bother. Um, but I, I love cranic, so I think I bought it anyway. Or maybe I already had it. I can't remember. Um, and then with other, so there are some special threads in here as well. So there was, now I can't remember all of them what they are, but there was like a sparkling, 
I've got this. I've got the legend. So there was a Rainbow Gallery Petit Treasure Braid, PB05. And I believe this one is... I have no idea. <laughs> Clearly, I have no idea. No, no, I do. I do. I think this one is for the legs. Legs and the antennas. So they sparkly as well. And so that's what was charted for the legs to be sparkly. Then there's this like outline of the wings, which is a cord. It's a cranic cord. What is it called? 205C. Um, so it's like a thick cranic. Um, so that's just for the outlines of the wings. And then there's also like a thin, thin sparkly thread for the like the the veins in the wings and this one this one is a DMC E898 so these were charted but because I thought the wings you know the wings in in the bumblebees they are normally like transparent but with the like the kind of <laughs> <laughs> like the holo it's, it's not like holographic like you know like they like a b kind of diamonds for diamond painting like they have this like shine to them which is kind of like different color shine like blue or purple depending how the light hits them you know so they're not like fully just transparent they, they have like they reflect light in in like like kind of like holographic kind of colors um so i think because of that i think here the wings were charted to be white but i'm like bumblebees don't have white wings um <laughs> so what can i use that's more closer to the like what, what you see in real life and there's this thread um from cranic which is which is white but it's not quite white it's um i think it's 032 and that because a cranic has multiple different whites and 032 is this one that is like i call it a fairy white it's <laughs> because it's it got exactly that kind of ab effect like the the holographic kind of effect that you could like blues and purples kind of sparkling through it so anyway so i don't know if you can see it but they're not quite white white they're more like sparkly like more like real wings i think um than if they were just white so that's my own addition and then another addition which you may see now that i put at this angle is again i used whisper thread to make the bumblebees more fluffy because i was sitting in poland right and we had this big bush of flowers basically it was flowering like mad when i was in poland and it was full of bumblebees okay it was like one bumblebee after another bumblebee so many bumblebees and they were all just like buzzing around and working they were really hard working they were like covered in the yellow stuff you know from the flowers like they were actually they couldn't move anymore because they were so covered in it um but yeah th what i noticed about them is they're really fluffy you know the, the real bumblebees are fluffy and I thought, why don't I try and add some whisper thread on top of my DMC and just to add a bit more fluffiness and like a bit more like they also look a bit fatter as well. <laughs> and my mom said, oh, I prefer them without the fluff um, because she said they look more scary <laughs> because my mom doesn't like bugs very much and she doesn't like the big fluffy bumblebee bumblebees very much. And when they didn't have the fluff on top, they looked much less scary, I guess because they looked less real um but now with the fluff i think they look more like real bumblebees so i'm actually quite happy with the fluff um it did maybe take away a little bit from they were much brighter before i put the whisper thread they seemed much like clearer and brighter uh so that's the only thing that maybe i miss that like i've kind of taken that away with the whisper thread because they got so fluffy so i think the dark fluffiness took away from some of that brightness but still i think they look really good no um so anyway so i'm happy because they look more like real bumblebees and um i've got all charts from the series and also i've got fabrics for all of them as well now 
Um, and I, I think one day they would look great in um, my parents' house, um, you know, like a series of bumblebees, butterflies, um, what's the other one? Ladybirds, and then like this, the, the biggest one, and I think the most beautiful one is with the dragonflies. And just having like a whole series in like a hallway or something, I think that would look fantastic because it's such a countryside house and they've got all of these things. They've got like excess of, um, they've got too many, especially ladybugs. Um, yeah, they've, they've, they've got <laughs> invasions of them. <laughs> um, but they get uh, lots of butterflies and um, some dragonflies as well. So I think that would fit really well for a Polish country house. Um, the fabric, um, because I mentioned the fabric, I hope you can see, I'm not sure if the lighting is great for the fabric, but it's more or less the right color, I think. Um, it's quite similar to the one that was charted, I think, but it's slightly maybe more orangey than this one, most maybe more pinkish, I guess. But I think it depends on the lighting as well. Um, right now I've got artificial light, so I think it looks darker, kind of more... Yeah, maybe slightly more orangey than it would look in uh, like in daylight but this is fabric from Paul stitches um, <laughs> and i should tell you what it's called right um but i can't remember so i'm going to put it in the description below or i'll put it on the screen i'll put it somewhere so that you can find it if you really want to find it um but i just got it from Paul stitches and i think it's it looks to me like it's 30 to count uh even weave because i love even weave Okay, and now I'm losing my voice completely. I'm really tired. I've realized this video is 15 minutes and I only meant for it to be like 20 minutes because um, <laughs> I meant to just make short videos now. Uh, but this kind of turned into a floss tube, I guess, like a proper floss tube, almost proper floss tube, no, a, a very disjointed, uh, chaotic, disorganized, but um, sort of floss tube. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I hope you're gonna come back for more. Um, there's never a guarantee when the next video is gonna be posted um, here because it, it's very variable. There's no guarantee how long the next video is going to be and what it's going to be about. Um, but I, I would love to do some diamond painting to be honest, uh, but I don't have any time. So um, because I have to do all my Christmas stitching, um, I probably won't have really time for crochet as well. Um, so mostly towards the end of the year will just be probably, um, yeah, some maybe some progress videos on my Christmas stitching. Um, and I don't think there's going to be so much more. But I do have some previously recorded things that I've already pre-recorded but haven't edited. <laughs> and I have some other things that I, I stitched before that I still haven't recorded even. So yeah, so there, there's going to be some videos eventually about something, uh, but I don't know yet <laughs> what exactly. <laughs> So you're just gonna have to wait and see. Um, but I hope you enjoy um, whatever you see. I hope you like my channel. Uh, if you do and you haven't subscribed yet, um, please consider subscribing. And um, I do hope to see you in my next video. And for now, happy stitching, diamond painting, um, crocheting or knitting or whatever you do. Or just happy, happy day, happy evening or whatever time it is where you are. And uh, yes. <laughs> All the best to you guys. See you next time.